Let's take a look at a couple more applications with probability. In this example, if a paintball player has a hit rate of 5%, in 10 shots, what is the probability of at least one hit? And this calculation becomes easier if we think of the opposite condition. And in this situation, the opposite of at least one hit means no hits. So first what I'd like to do is calculate the probability of no hits in the 10 shots. And the probability of getting no hit in one shot is going to be 1 minus the 5% or 0 0.05, and that's equal to 95% or 0.95. And that's the probability of having no hit in a single shot, and if we want to find out the probability of having no hit in 10 shots, we're going to then take that to the 10th power. And working that out on a calculator to uh, two significant figures, we get approximately 0.6 or 60%. We'll now go back to the original question, finding the probability of at least one hit, which is the opposite of getting no hits, and so we will subtract from 1, so we'll take our 1 minus 0.6 and that's equal to approximately 0.4 or 40 percent. We can use a similar calculation for 20 shots, again taking our probability of not getting a hit at 95 percent and raising that to the 20th power, and from that we get that it's going to be approximately 0.36. And so our probability of getting a hit is going to be 1 minus that value, 1 minus 0.36, which is equal to 0.64. So even with someone who's a bad shot, someone who misses 95% of the time, if they take enough shots, 20 shots, their chances of getting a hit will increase. This last application is not really in the scope of the course, but there's so many people that buy lottery tickets, I thought this would be helpful. So we have in a lottery, each ticket costs $10. There are 100 tickets sold, and there is one $500 prize and three $100 prizes. And in this scenario, there are three possible outcomes. One is that you buy a ticket and you don't win anything, and that is described as losing $10. The second is that you buy a ticket and you win one of the $100 prizes, but because you spent $10 on the ticket, you actually only gain $90. And the third possible outcome is that you win the $500 prize and because you spent the $10, you gain $490. So the probability of each outcome, there are 100 tickets sold, and we know then that the denominator is going to be 100. But there will be 96 people who will buy tickets and not win anything, and so the probability of losing $10 is 96% or 0.96. The second possibility, gaining $90, that happens if you win one of the three $100 prizes, and so the probability of this is going to be 3 out of 100, or 3%. 0.03, and the probability of gaining 490 is 1 out of 100, which is 1%. Next, the expected value of a ticket is the weighted value of all the outcomes and divided by the number of tickets. And this dividing by the number of tickets is incorporated in our probabilities over here where we divide it by 100. And so what we're going to say is that E, the expected value, is the sum of the weighted values of each of these possibilities. For the first possibility, the weight is 96%, but the value of that possibility is negative 10 because losing $10 is represented by that number. For gaining $90, there's a 3% chance, so that's the weighting, but the value of that gain is a positive $90, dollars 
and for winning the one five hundred dollar prize there's a one percent chance of that but the value of that is a positive four hundred and ninety and when I simplify this I end up with a negative nine point six but then adding to that a positive two point seven and adding to that also a positive four point nine And when I put those numbers together, I end up with a negative 2, or a negative 2.0. And what does that mean? Well, it means that on an average ticket, you will be losing $2. Another way to think of this is that if you bought all of the tickets, you would spend $1,000, so that would be a negative $1,000 but you would also win all of the prizes. So you would win one $500 prize and three $100 prizes for a total of $800. And the sum of that would be a negative $200. And when you spread that over the 100 tickets, you're losing an average of $2 per ticket. And as expected, the house always wins.